Right, Matthew, there was the bloodbath comments, but here's what else he said just about 15 minutes later in this same rally speech. If this election, if this election isn't won, I'm not sure that you'll ever have another election in this country. Does that make sense? I don't think you're going to have another election in this country if we don't win this election. I don't think you're going to have another election or certainly not an election that's meaningful. So in both of these remarks, Matthew, Trump, you could say, walks up to that rhetorical line and maybe leaves things open for interpretation just a bit. What do you think these remarks mean, especially as we go into the election season deeper and deeper, closer to November? Well, first of all, I want to say is when Donald Trump talks about the threats to democracy, it's the ultimate in the art of projection in this, because the biggest threat is what he's been doing over the course of the last three or four years in undermining democracy. So him for him to say democracy is going to go away if he loses is, is quite the projection. I also want to follow up with something Vaughn said. The idea that Donald Trump, Donald Trump here, a person that has praised Vladimir Putin and King Jong-un, that it has encouraged a, a blood being spilled it was at the January 6th a rally, who says his campaign is about the uh, art of retribution in the course of this. Somehow we're supposed to be confused by his comments about bloodbath or that they meant something else when every single thing, as Vaughn has said, has laid out exactly what he wants to do and how he wants to do it, not the least of which he said he'd like to be a dictator for a day if he gets reelected in the course of this. And so I think uh, Donald Trump, I'll give him credit for something, uh, though he tries to back off or his campaign tries to back off. He shows us who he is and the threat he poses uh, to the American constitutional democracy today. And again, I'll just reiterate the idea that he's worried about democracy because the Democrats may win in this court uh, in this election is so much projection. Matthew, let's just for a minute take Trump's word for it, that he was talking about the auto industry when he talked about bloodbath. As far as the Biden campaign response, they could take a couple different paths here. One, they could talk about the facts that Biden policies have helped the auto industry, while Trump's tariffs cost roughly a quarter million jobs. Or they can focus not on, you know, exactly that and the, the substance, but they could they can focus more on the rhetoric. And that seems to be the strategy they're taking. Is it the right strategy? Well, I believe it is, because I think the campaign, any campaign like this is to present the American public. What are the next four years going to look like? That's, I think, incumbent upon Joe Biden to present. What does America look like and what it's going to be like in a President Trump's second term if he gets elected in this, and contrast this, what that would be in a Joe Biden election, and not delve down into sort of like try to line up the 10 top facts in this and compare it to this, because this, people, you know, when people have an emotional connection to something, and there's great emotional connection in this election on both sides, interestingly, in this, you can't change their mind with a rational argument. And so I believe the best tactic and the best strategy for the Biden campaign is to say, here's what a Trump presidency will be like, and this is how it's going to affect your life, and present it in stark terms and let the American public decide, based upon those stark terms, who they want going forward. Matthew, there's some new reporting in The Washington Post that Trump wants to bring back Paul Manafort to his campaign. Let's remind folks that this is the man who worked with Trump in 2016. He was later convicted on bank and tax fraud, then he was pardoned. And then he, you know, passed campaign information to the Russians, we learned. A report, in fact, from a Senate bipartisan committee found, quote, Manafort's presence on the campaign and proximity to Trump created opportunities for Russian intelligence services to exert influence over and acquire confidential information on the Trump campaign. So why would you want this guy anywhere near the 2024 campaign? It's like felons are us, so opening felons are us in the course of this. It doesn't surprise me that Donald Trump, who's under, as you know, full well, and we've been, you've been reporting on 91 indictments on various felonies across the board. And what your lead into this was another one of, of, of financial fraud in, in the course of this. I think this demonstrates what Donald Trump wants. And I would argue that Paul Manafort wouldn't be a comp 
competent campaign person. He's not demonstrated his competency much over the course of the last two or three decades in this. Donald Trump wants loyalty more than anything else. And I think he believes that Paul Manafort by not sort of testifying against him or not presenting evidence against Donald Trump, believes he's a loyal person. And that, to me, is what you're going to see over and over again. Probably it'll be reflected in his vice presidential pick, is loyalty more than anything else, not competency, not loyalty to the Constitution of the United States of America, but loyalty to Donald Trump. And that trumps, trumps not to use a play on word, every other value or every other attribute that, that one would think would be you would look for in a staff or a cabinet or a vice president. Loyalty to Donald Trump is preeminent. Matthew Dowd, I appreciate your perspective. Thanks so much for joining us.